Well, Southwest is in hot water this morning. The airline is canceling most flights out of San Diego, at least for a few days. Thanks for joining us here at 6 a.m. I'm Evan Narani in for Eric Connor and I'm Netta Irampour. Yeah, many people stuck here till the start of the new year. Travelers across the country being affected by this. The Department of Transportation now investigating. I mean, look at all of the airports. It's not just ours, of course, impacted by this nightmare. CBS 8's Chris Grow live at San Diego International Airport airport where we see long lines and all that luggage yet again. Chris, what's the latest? Yeah, people here inside of Southwest uh, Terminal side, they're basically trying to figure out what's next. Take a look at the big board uh, right now, arrivals and departures, and that red word there, cancel, taking up a vast majority of that. Now, on the arrival side, we're still seeing places like Baltimore, Dallas Love, still scheduled to get in, in Oakland included. Uh, as for flights that are leaving Denver, uh, 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 excuse me, Denver, Austin, as well as Vegas, but again, anything is possible at this point in time as we have seen hundreds of flights leaving San Diego have been impacted and canceled. So once again, our headquarters has blocked us from rebooking you on anything until January 2nd. All we can do right now is help you process a refund or a credit according to the fare that you got. And so you hear the message there coming from the Southwest employees informing those who had their flights canceled that booking a future flight wouldn't be available till January 2nd. So again, a lot of the flights that we're seeing right now, these are flights that were previously scheduled. But with everyone getting their flights canceled, looking towards the future, this is just causing chaos at the moment at a lot of terminals across the country. So this is where we stand right now. Southwest has canceled more than thousands of flights across the country. 2,900 was the latest number uh, that we saw but that could easily have gone up since then. That includes flights, of course, here out of San Diego. Hundreds of travelers have been stranded. Luggage is piling up in a makeshift graveyard over now from baggage claim to the food court. The airline is putting the blame right now on extreme winter weather that we saw last week, the impact that it's had on staffing. Remember, there are break requirements for airline uh, staff, pilots, as well as those who work uh, as stewardesses, uh, stewards. They are often required to take a nine-hour break after they work 14 or more hours and with so many people working long hours due to the holidays but also the winter weather that we saw uh, there are mandated uh, breaks as well as a host of other technical difficulties impacting Southwest we know the Department of Transportation is going to be taking a look into this but a lot of people want a lot of answers sooner than later it's frustrating I mean it means that we won't be meeting up with family or skiing probably this year unless we decide to drive which is a real option And so take a look at your screen right there. This is a part of the statement that Southwest put out in the aftermath of all this saying, quote, this safety first work is intentional, ongoing and necessary to return to normal reliability, one that minimizes last minute inconveniences. We have made the decision to continue operating a reduced schedule by flying roughly one third, again, one third of their schedule for the next several days. That's the amount of flights. So two thirds. So think about that. That means that two thirds of the upcoming flights here in the next several days have been canceled in order for Southwest to try to recoup, re, 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 uh, regroup there and try to get back to a normal schedule. But you can see the lines here behind us. A lot of these people in line to rebook or to simply try to figure out what's going on. We know the phone lines have been ringing off the hook that Southwest putting out online that they have been trying to staff, of course, to let people know uh, what it is that they can do, what recourse they have. We've been trying to help you as well to go to CBS8.com, click on that story link to find out what it is that you can do. Evan and Netta. Yeah, you see that look of despair across many people's faces. Some booking cars to drive across the country. Chris, thank you for bringing that to us. Also, take a look right here. A huge mess at Tijuana's airport right now. Travelers stranded after flights with the airline Valaris delayed or canceled. So you see a lot of people and a lot of luggage. Videos posted online show that luggage everywhere, similar to what's happening here in San Diego. Issues really started there on Friday before Christmas when fog in Tijuana grounded many flights, but people were still having issues flying out yesterday. And that massive holiday winter storm is now being blamed for at least 55 deaths nationwide. President Biden signed an emergency declaration mobilizing FEMA to assist in New York State. This new drone video shows Buffalo blanketed in thick snow. Thousands are without power and another foot of snow is still expected there today.
And take a look at this here. 20 minutes from Buffalo, a restaurant is completely frozen over. Hoax Lakeshore Restaurant is in Hamburg, New York. The ice is caused by waves from the Lake Erie crashing into the building. It's pretty heavy, that's what I'm, I'm nervous about, but um, nothing broke, no windows broke, no leaks. Literally looks like the movie Frozen. The mayor of Jackson, Mississippi has also issued an emergency declaration for his city after frigid temperatures caused pipes to burst, leaving some residents without running water. And now turning to an update on Title 42. This, of course, is the policy at the center of the border conversation right now. Well, Title 42 could expire as soon as today. This policy allows border officials to deport some asylum seekers back to their country, many of them staying in Mexico as well, and they're citing public health concerns. The Biden administration targeted today as being the end date for the policy after the Christmas weekend. Well, Supreme Court temporarily halted the expiration while justices consider a lawsuit by Republican governors now, we could get that decision any moment throughout the morning. For now, local leaders bracing themselves for a possible influx of migrants heading to our border. What they should have done is weeks before December 21st is get ready at the border, sending more um, um, help to transition entry of people that are waiting on the border to come in. Now you've seen thousands of people there in El Paso, Texas. The Biden administration has yet to announce an action plan for the expected influx of migrants. A White House spokesperson says the administration is willing to work with lawmakers on real solutions like comprehensive immigration reform and border security measures. Turning now locally to the Holiday Bowl. Festivities continue today as we count down to the big game at Petco Park. The North Carolina Tar Heels are going to be taking on the Oregon Ducks tomorrow. Today, though, you're invited to the Snapdragon Bowl Bash in the Gaslamp District. There will be food, music, and giveaways, and it's free to attend. Two university bands, those two bands, are going to face off in a battle of the bands. That's all happening at 5 p.m. today. Tomorrow's game at Petco Park also at 5 p.m. And before that, we're going to be bringing you live coverage of the Holiday Bowl Parade starting at 10 a.m. That parade is first off and then comes the game in the evening. We're going to be streaming it live on CBS 8 Plus and coming up in our second half hour, the CEO for the SDCCU Holiday Bowl will join us live to talk about what we can expect for the parade. So we'll have more details on all that coming up. But again, make sure to stream us live at 10 a.m. Tomorrow morning, we'll be all around Waterfront Park, all through Harbor Drive, where all of those uh, floats and uh, people are going to be lining up for the Holiday Bowl Parade. Let's take a look at how the forecast is shaping up because we've been talking for the last couple days about that chance of showers as we move toward 10 a.m. tomorrow, but it does now look like most of those showers will come through in the early time frame overnight, really from late tonight into early tomorrow and then taper off before 9 and 10 a.m. Already this morning over the last about two hours, we saw a few sprinkles across East County. That's mainly been the area that's expected a few light areas of drizzle uh, forecast for the day though going to show cloudy skies if not mostly cloudy skies we should have a little bit of the sun peeking through for your inland valleys for your mountains and for your deserts temperatures primarily in the 60s for your coastline inland we could climb to the upper 60s perhaps even hit 70 degrees as that afternoon high want to mention this high surf advisory that's already in effect at last through Thursday at 4 p.m. five to eight foot waves possible along our coast Coastline all the way up through the Orange County coastline. That means good idea to stay out of the water if you're not an experienced surfer or swimmer. Also a good idea, of course, after the rainfall to avoid the water for, say, 48, 72 hours or so. So it could come as a two for one there. Temperatures outside right now are mostly in the 40s and 50s. 48 right now in Escondido, 51 in Poway. They were in the 40s earlier. We're all watching, though, this atmospheric river as it arrives, dropping our temperatures down and bringing on that chance of rain. So so daily opportunity for rain starts late tonight into early tomorrow, lingers through the end of the week, and that means Friday through Sunday, including your New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, could see some rain impacts. Temperatures keep cooling all the way through Thursday. Let's take a look at traffic this morning. So far, things have been quiet on the roads, and that is still the case as we look outside right now. All we have on the screen here are those construction symbols. That means that there are no major crashes or collisions. According to CHP, we will keep you up to date, but yesterday was a very quiet start to the day. We think a lot of people were uh, holding on to the 20
26th as their kind of after Christmas holiday. So roads have been quiet and we expect that to maybe even be the case this morning. Netta.